Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. Looking to get some keys made, locks rekeyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of Alfred Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid-City Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Some Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge. Some don't. The ones that do know BTR is all about being closer, more convenient, with non-stops and short hops to anywhere their business takes them. They also know not flying BTR means more traffic, longer lines, and wasted time. So if it's about going from driveway to runway with a lot less highway, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. edition of the Roger Taylor <laughs> Show, Clarence Bugs and the Coach, along at Scoreboard, 106 5 5 14 Boulevard, Baton Rouge's newest sports grill. Coach, we start this week talking about LSU. As we like to say uh, a lot of times in the Black Baptist Church, the Tigers showed up and showed out, racking up honor after honor from top to bottom. Let's start with Coach O. Bebe winning coach of the year. A guy, quite frankly, that many wondered, many of them out loud, whether or not he was the right guy for the job to begin with. It's always that with a lot of coaches. 90, 80% of the coaches who are, people wonder, is he the right guy? Right. Well, I always felt he was the right guy, especially for this environment. Mm -hmm. He was a homeboy. He spoke the language, yeah. which yeah. was so important. And uh, and the players believed in him, which is even critical. Mm -hmm. They believe in Coach O. Like all good coaches, Coach O surrounded himself with the best. He went out and got Joe Brady from the Saints, and it turned out to be a match made in heaven. So much so that Joe Brady was named Assistant Coach of the Year. No, I didn't know that, but that's even good. Mm -hmm. There's a guy that's probably sitting out there that didn't get a lot of ink. Mm -hmm. The legendary Johnny Robinson, right. John Robinson mm -hmm. from USC, just having that mindset, giving him information. And I got to think with the running game, which John Robinson believed in, right. played a big part in putting everything together. Mm -hmm. You look on the defensive side of the ball, Grant Delpit winning the Thorpe despite the nagging injuries that he had to overcome during the course of the season, leading a defense that's come on strong in recent weeks. You got to be happy and proud of a young man like that. Oh, yeah, he's really a team leader on that side of the ball for mm -hmm. the Tigers. And uh, he's a Houstonian, and uh, he did very well, and I'm proud of of the job that he did. While we're on the defensive side of the ball, Daryl Stingley took home freshman of the year. Can you think of anyone in recent memory, maybe with the exception of a, I don't know, a Tyron Matthew, who has begun his career with such absolutely amazing ball skills as Stingley? No, there's those kind of guys come far and in between. Mm -hmm. I mean, God just don't create and give us that many kind of kids who can do it. Yeah. So we have to be very proud that we got to see him on the high school level in Baton Rouge mm -hmm. and now on the collegiate level mm -hmm. here in Baton Rouge. I guess it kind of goes back to the old saying, if it were that easy, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> That's right? right. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, being a former coach, Everybody thinks they could do it, and I shake my head, mm -hmm. knowing that only a few of them come that can do it, you know? Yeah, 
Yeah, when we come back, we'll talk a little more purple and gold. As you might have figured, oh, it's conspicuously absent. We want to do a whole segment talking about Joe with the E-A-U-X. Yeah, that Joe, when the Roger Cador show <laughs> continues. Stay close. A-E-U-X? That's what Apple when you out of the chaos. Hi folks, Clarence Bugs here. Coach Roger Kador would take the time to tell you how to catch our brand new show, The Roger Kador Show, but as you can see, he's kind of busy right now out at scoreboards. Baton Rouge's newest sports grill with food that is absolutely amazing. Catch the show, 8 o'clock, Tuesday nights, 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays and on Pelican Television's YouTube channel as well. You want to come out and have a great time. It's awesome, isn't it, Coach? Mm-hmm. Told you. <laughs> hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, Take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Welcome back to segment two of this week's edition of the Roger Kador Show. Clarence Bugs and the coach at Scoreboards, located at 10655 Corsi Boulevard, Baton Rouge's newest sports grill. Coach, let's talk a little bit about the Heisman itself. Joe Burrow winning the Heisman, in addition to all these other awards that went to offensive players, defensive players, and coaches, was just the icing on the cake. It's often said, some guys are just born with it. When you listen to that acceptance speech, Joe Burrow has it, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he's a well-rounded young man, mm -hmm. and to me, that is it because mm -hmm. those kind of people thrive in life after sports right. and when you're not on the field. They're really an asset to the community. Mm -hmm. So I consider him being having it because of all the attri other attributes. Yeah, I uh, thought it was particularly poignant that during his time, his moment, something he had worked his entire life for, he took the time to mention this impoverished group of young people uh, in his hometown. And they are literally now raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for the food bank to feed impoverished people in that part of the country. That's a special kind of gesture, Coach. Oh, man, it is. And to th See, this is the kind of thing when you feel, oh, you know, the Bible say, always think of the less fortunate. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it's there for a reason. Yeah. And I'm sure he was, I don't know if he was thinking scripturally that the less fortunate needed, this was the right platform for right. him to mention. Right. We're going to take care of the less fortunate. Uh -huh. And I really, touch, it touched my heart when he did it. Yeah. It, uh, now that you mention that, when you look at it from that particular angle, uh, Scripture does in fact tell us the poor will always be among you. Uh, and for him to use some time that, I don't know, 99 plus percent of us would have chosen to tell our story and talk about our journey, he chose to reach out and help someone else. And uh, that really says a lot about his upbringing, the coaching that he has received, the parents that he has, and of course the teammates that he's played with throughout the course of the years. You, you, you gotta have someone to help nurture all of this along, don't you? Yeah, and I wish to say because when you reach out to those who are considered less fortunate, out of those, that group of people, who is going to come out and do great things? Mm -hmm. That's we right. really don't know. That's right. That's why you can't ever give up on 
people because of their condition. Mm -hmm. you, you help them because the brilliant people may be down there who just been in a difficult situation. Yeah, the uh, margin of victory was the largest in history, as it should have been. Yeah, it should have been. I mean, he did, he played every game. He got better toward the end. He never had an up and down. He kept climbing that ladder, climbing the ladder. In the final game, he really put the icing on the cake. There was a, a very, very small percentage of voters that didn't even have Joe Burrow's name on their ballot. What would those people smoke and coach? Well, it happens, Clarence. This is, listen, we live in a very diverse world. Yeah. Where people who vote on it, people in athletics and they don't know much about athletics. Yeah. They yeah. really don't and they might have some reason they didn't vote for him. Mm -hmm. But he should have been almost a unanimous choice. Yeah. But you know, there are a lot of people who voted for people in their region to make sure that they gave vote because they got to live with these people. Well, yeah, that is true. That's a great point. That's a great point. At the end of the day, um, when you listen to that acceptance speech, when you watch how Joe has conducted himself throughout this entire campaign, for a lot of people, some of the values that you and I grew up with in our generation, a lot of those things uh, have become passe. They've become outdated. They've become outmoded. But at the end of the day, humble never goes out of style, does it? Never. The value he's got is never out of style. Some people may choose not to use them, right. but they always are going to be there. And it's always good for our young people to use them because he's a classic example yep. of what you would like to see our young people be like. And when you look at the results that he has uh, garnered from all of this, it just simply reinforces the fact that, yes, good things do happen for good people. When we come back, we shift gears from purple and gold to a little blue and gold. When this week's edition of the Roger Kador Show continues, stay close. Let's get Marty in there. Maybe he should be up for the high school. <laughs> Looking to get some keys made, locks rekeyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of Alfred Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid City, Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. out of the chaos. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Mandeville at 985-722-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Mandeville at 985-722-1040. Your go-to tax relief. Welcome back for segment three of this week's edition of the Roger Kador Show. Clarence Bugs and the coach at scoreboards at 10655 Corsi Boulevard, Baton Rouge's newest sports grill. Coach, the Jaguars will have the entire offseason to think about what could have been if they had been able to handle all corn. That's a long time to have a bitter taste in your mouth, isn't it? Well, yeah, but 
if I know young people the way I know young people, <laughs> man, they're getting ready for Christmas right yeah, now. Yeah. This is history, ancient history. Yeah. So that's the good thing about them. They're able to move on faster uh -huh. than people used to do. Right. I mean, they, they have to go to the next stage in their life. I, I was going to ask, it, does that kind of give the young people of today maybe a leg up on our generation and older generations because that darn monkey would have been on our back coach until kickoff next season. Does it, is it advantageous in one way in that you get it out of your mind that much faster and you're ready to go back to work next season? I think it is. What good is it going to do <laughs> to hang on to it? Yeah, it good point. It has no value. Good point. Other than it makes you miss out on something else that's important coming your way. Yeah. So I think it's a good thing. Forget it. Move forward. Work hard. Now, on the other side of that, though, how tough does it make recruiting when you've lost to a team four times in a row and you are potentially recruiting the same young men? Well, there'll be some that will come your way and some will go to Alcon. Mm -hmm. uh, Southern has a lot to offer. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's uh, recruiting is, is something. You know, you just never know with the young people of today. You know, but Southern has got a wider territory right. that they can recruit from than mm -hmm. Alcon. Good point. Alcon is going to be local. They're going to recruit the state of Mississippi. Right. And the value they have is junior colleges oh, yeah. in the state of Mississippi. Oh, yeah. We don't have that in Louisiana. Right. So Alcorn does have an advantage in that they can replace special offensive linemen, mm -hmm. position that's hard to fill. Offensive linemen, defensive linemen, they could get JC players. Yeah. Can you stress enough how important it is that the Jaguar Nation understand how amazing it was? to get to the conference championship these last two years in a row despite the crippling sanctions imposed by the NC2A. Well, I, I, there are some that knows, but I talk to a lot of people who have no idea yeah. that this is this happening. They want something they really don't understand. Mm -hmm. Coach Odom have done a fantastic job yep. with the situation, the hand that he was dealt. Mm -hmm. So now we could look be more positive, support the program, and then they have a good recruiting season. And I think they got a chance because the quarterback is coming back, and that ought to help with the senior leadership there. This year, once again, we only had the bare minimum number of home games at Mumford Stadium. What, if anything, can be done to change that? Well, it's about money, Clarence. Mm -hmm. That's all it's about. Mm -hmm. And if fans don't come to the home game, why would you play there? Yeah. You understand? And yeah. you could go sell games and make the, make the money. See, that f football supports a lot of part of the athletic. Department. Oh, yeah. Oh, They're yeah. the one that's got to do it. And this is why the community has to understand. Mm -hmm. We could play six home games. Right. But you have to come out. Right. We have to be able to fill the stands up, mm -hmm. buy season books, right. so we can make the money, and then we'll have the home games. So why do you <clears throat> think it is? Is there anything in particular that comes to mind why the Jaguar Nation travels so well? I mean, we are <laughs> nationally known uh, for hitting the road and going to other places <laughs> and spending our dollars there. But when it comes time for us to spend money at home, we find ways not to do it. Any, any reasons come to mind? I don't know. I could never wrap my arms around that to figure mm -hmm. it out because it's so difficult to understand why you would spend all that money going on the road and not come and support them at home. Right. It just doesn't add up. But, you know, people love going to Houston. Mm -hmm. What what do they have in Huntsville, Alabama? Or oh, Pine, Pine Bluff, oh, Arkansas. Pine Bluff, Arkansas, for God's sake. I've been there. Yeah. You know, but they will go. They'll go. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, they went to Tallahassee. They'll go. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going numbers. Well, it, it's kind of like the old saying, you got to spend money to make money. But at the end of the day, turning those dollars over 
in our own community 10, 15, 17, 20 times beats the Dickens out of spending that money in some other place where they get the benefit of turning those dollars over and over again. And that's one of the reasons it hurts with getting corporate sponsorship mm -hmm. for the athletic department because yep. people look at how many dollars you spend. Right. In this in bad mirrors before mm -hmm. they can turn over give the support to the university. Right. I mean it plays into the hand. I listen, I used to fundraise go in and I know what people say. How can we give money when they don't spend the money here? Right. Right. Well, if he says it, you can take that to the bank. When we come <laughs> back, we go from blue and gold to black and gold. No, not the guys in North Louisiana, our guys right up the road. When the Roger Cador show continues, stay close. <coughs> go Gremlin, I mean, no, say <laughs> That's for the Gremlin people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I don't know if, if they uh, had turned that into uh, a novelty shirt or not, but uh, that's the kind of stuff that only throws more fuel onto the fire between Southern and Grambling. Right. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the Saints. Quarterback Drew Brees now temporarily because I get the feeling this thing is going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. The greatest of all time after throwing four touchdown passes and setting the new NFL touchdown passing record. This guy coach is like the Energizer Bunny Rabbit. He just keeps going and going and going. And you remember when I mentioned early in the year <clears throat> that because he was out the four weeks or uh, the that legs it, are fresher. The arm is fresher. Arm and is fresher. Everybody yeah. is fresher. Now you're really getting to see the value uh -huh. of a 42-year-old man playing at that level, you know? So uh, so I got to say that what Drew Brees did last night was fantastic. So we're down. All right, well, uh, I have no clue what that signal is Marty is giving me other than to keep rolling. All right, now we'll go to break and we'll come back and talk some more. Saints complete with highlights. You got my word. Well, I don't know because the computer's down. Just come on back for the final segment of the Roger Cador Show. Stay with us. Hey, Coach Roger Cador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Beep. Some Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge. Some don't. The ones that do know BTR is all about being closer, more convenient, with non-stops and short hops to anywhere their business takes them. They also know not flying BTR means more traffic, longer lines, and wasted time. So if it's about going from driveway to runway with a lot less highway, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. Hi folks, Clarence Bugs here. Coach Roger Kador would take the time to tell you how to catch our brand new show, The Roger Kador Show, but as you can see, he's kind of busy right now out at scoreboards. Baton Rouge's newest sports grill with food that is absolutely amazing. Catch the show, 8 o'clock Tuesday nights, 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays and on Pelican Television's YouTube channel as well. You want to come out and have a great time. It's awesome, isn't it, Coach? Mm-hmm. Told you. Welcome back for the final segment of this week's edition of the Roger Kador Show. Well, uh, go ahead and roll the highlights of the truck at their leisure whenever they're ready, Coach, as we continue our conversation. You know, the, the parallels with Joe Burrow and Drew Brees are kind of spooky. Both of them wear number nines. 
Both were pretty much given up, given up on by others, uh, and both left where they were to go someplace else. And the rest is history. All of this is simply more arguments as to why you never give up on yourself, right? Oh, yeah. Well, people are going to give up on you all the time. Yep. But you can't give up on yourself uh -huh. because that's why you got to work hard in the way Drew Brees worked hard to come back from that arm injury. Yep. And about a lot of people didn't trust him, didn't think he could come back, yep. including little Nicky. That's right. That's right. Of course, now, him setting uh, the NFL touchdown passing record is one thing. But somebody has to catch all of those passes. Michael Thomas caught 12 of them for 128 yards and a touchdown, setting a new single season record for games with at least 10 catches. And he's now just 11 catches away from the single season reception record. He's a pretty special guy as well, Coach. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were made for each other. Breeze throws a really soft catchable pass mm -hmm. and Michael Thomas has got glue in his hand. I mean yep. it's amazing how the ball goes right in there and stick. Yep. So they were made for each other. He runs really good routes also. Alvin Kamara also became only the fourth player in NFL history to have more than 2,000 yards rushing and 2,000 yards receiving his first three years in the league. Goes to show you what kind of drafting that the Saint does. I mean, yeah. he was a fourth or fifth round draft to us, so it wasn't like they drafted him in the first round. Yeah. And they've done that. I don't know where Michael Thomas came from. I don't <laughs> I know he wasn't a high draft to us. Right. And you know, and they had a, a receiver before him, the six five guy from New York, mm -hmm. upstate New York who caught all those passes. But uh just a wonderful situation that exists with the New Orleans Saints. The Saints led that game from wire to wire, beginning to end, exactly the way you want to win games at this point of the season, correct? Yeah, you know, <coughs> they did a very good job last week against uh, the 49ers. Mm -hmm. They scored at will, and they did it again this weekend. Yeah. And if they got two more games, I think, Correct, Tennessee and Carolina. And it's important that they win both of them. Yeah. And get some help somewhere because they want that number one seed. That was going to be the last question. How important is momentum for this team right now, Coach? Well, it's, it's, it's something you got to have. You want, go, you want to go into the final weekend of the se a season playing mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. Well, when uh, all is said and done, I, uh, I've already made out my list. I checked it <laughs> twice and I got it in the mail to the North Pole as the dress of the jolly one himself. And all I'm asking for, not a whole lot this year, national championship for the Tigers, Super Bowl for the Saints. That would make it truly a Christmas to remember. On behalf of the crew and the coach, I'm Clarence Bugs. We'll see you next week with another edition of the Roger Kador Show. We'll see you then.